Howdy okay, everybody, welcome back to Portal. Uh, so if you haven't seen this game before, it's a um, kind of a an experiment in a texted a te an experiment. Excuse me. If you haven't seen the game before, it's kind of an experiment in uh, in text adventures. Um, it's I mean in essence, it's really a uh, it's really a uh, prose novel that's been um, subdivided into little sections, um, written from different perspectives. And kind of, um, you're basically reassembled with a computer interface. That's that's kind of the experience that we're having. Um, but I think the uh, the context that um, we're sort of interacting with it through this fictional layer of um, accessing an old computer terminal. Uh, in the the far future, um, kind of gives it a different a different flavour, but I'm definitely uh, finding the um, the method by which we get more story to to be more wearing the more we go on. Just gonna duck a little window away there. Okay, here we are. Okay, I don't want to click on anything there. Are we are we good? Are we in? We're in. Okay. So, I can't remember exactly where we left off last time. Let's check back in with Homer. So, I'll just briefly recap the, um, the conceit of this, um, this story from, for anybody who hasn't joined us before. We are an astronaut returned to Earth. Um, and we've been in uh, cryosleep for, uh, I think, about 100 years. Yeah, I think about 100 years. Hang on, I haven't got a notebook up. Let me just get that for us. There should be uh, on the screen a little uh, a little set of notes that we took, which will give you a little bit of context if you're, if you're joining us for the first time. There we go. Um, if I scroll that down a little bit to... There. That might help a little. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so we were in space for about 100 years. We returned to Earth and uh, we couldn't find anybody, and all um, all human structures seemed to be abandoned. We've had just found one working computer terminal, um, and through that we've awakened a, a storytelling AI who's trying to help us uh, work out what has happened to humanity. Um, and as we go, we are locking uh, data entries in each of these categories. And then Home is kind of uh, reprocessing it for us and um, outputting what is essentially prose fiction. Um, and I, definitely some question in my mind. I think the, uh, the, the story has acknowledged this um, so far um, is that what we're being told may not be the, the actual truth. It may just be um, a probable fiction that Homer is making up out of the available facts. So there was nothing in Homer. The um, the gameplay here consists of uh, finding new entries to read, and once you've accessed one, um, it usually unlocks something else somewhere else. Okay, so uh, so here we have injury treatment in the medical one. So let's have a look at this. Med10 Medical Database. Ooh, a little missing symbol symbol. That's interesting. Antarctic Medical Technology. Treatment of injury. Injury treatment. Little is known of ant medical technologies. However, information brought back by visitors suggests widespread use of induction fields for treatment of tissue injuries. These are probably developments from standard longevity treatments combined with various subtle forms of tissue manipulation whose origin are attributed to ancient Chinese practice. Certainly, the induction fields are based on extremely complex picoelectronic circuits and work on the subcellular level, possibly creating a magnetic resonance with the biochemical flux inside tissues. Technology is not reproducible in intercorp sphere. Okay, so that's uh, an Antarctic ant, the Antarcticans. Um, that's a uh, technology that they have. Okay, I can't remember um, what that might relate to. Sometimes we get an entry that is filling in um, world details from something we've already read about in kind of a narrative section. 
and sometimes um, it's a bit of world detail that then creates a section of narrative detail. Um, but I can't remember that relating to anything else in particular from last time. Um, Homer can get us into these prescribed databases, luckily. Okay, what's well, something else new here as well? Okay, Vega Silink Download 1. So that's probably something to do with Wanda, I think, because Wanda is a character who's on a, uh, on a starship bound for the Vega colony. Homer requests Vega Silink Download. Oh, okay, this is a uh, narrative. Peter could dance with her. He could turn and slope a vein with her, just out of reach, and they could talk, each to each. There are recordings. Oh, Wanda, one. You sail on, each hour you sail further, and yet I feel that you are here beside me. Already we transcend certain limits. I see your memories, the house of mirrors in which you had to live. I see through your eyes the hands that must be yours lifting to touch your hair. Your hair is light, so light, caught in the sun through the window. Is that a window, a real one? Have you noticed, Peter, how you've changed? When we met, see the humour in that, as if we really had met to touch our flesh. You were so young, uncertain, yet the word I want to speak is ardent. You were ardent, so intense. Why are you doing this? You say they are chasing you, that you are running from the council, from your city, your world. Why? I am running, Wanda, because they are pursuing. I am running because the pole calls me, because I once idly interested I was once idly interested in something that now seems the salvation of the human race, the species that we are. Wanda, you are sailing at nearly the speed of light. Is that speed a limit? It does not seem so, or we could not be sharing this strange twilight space like this. You are seventeen years away at the speed of light. We should not be able to do this, yet we can. We do. So that is one reason. What reason, Peter? Love. Okay. So yeah, occasionally the, um, what are usually, um, kind of fairly objective entries in databases, um, and technical information, uh, sometimes are interrupted with uh, kind of these highly impressionistic uh, vignettes of things. And when Homer's flashing, that means Homer has something he wants to say. Come to home, I have a file ready for you. Okay, Homer. I think we're done with Silink. Yeah, okay. Um, while I click around for some new material, I'm just gonna mute the mic and have a little sip of drink. Okay, we've got transport under the uh, science and technology section, so let's find out about that. I think the uh, most sort of earthbound propulsion is uh, powered by liquid nitrogen, I believe. Let's have a look at the picture we've got for this one. It looks like it's relevant. Yeah, that's... I'm not sure uh, what, uh, what angle we're looking at it from, but that could be a transport. I'm, I'm a bit dubious that it seems to be called the incest 30. That seems, uh, seems rather odd, but there you go. World transport consists of a wide range of vehicular carriers, from individual four-seat liquid nitrogen air cushion vehicles to thousand-seat salt cycle rockets. Public transport includes, in some places, ancient maglev tunnel transports along the old rails laid down, down in the early part of the 21st century. A small feeder line ground effect. Buses ranging in capacity from 10 to 200 seats. These vehicles also use liquid nitrogen technology. LN vehicles can achieve altitudes of up to 50 feet, depending on terrain, and have minimal impact on the biosphere since the only effluent is ga gaseous nitrogen. Inside Warren's transport is by individual 
electric transports, which hug the walls at various levels. All such transport is under the control of the local node. Okay. If it's probably uh, from experience, it's probably a wise move to uh, do a, a full pass through all of these categories for anything new. Because then we should get um, as as many entries as possible unlocked in uh, in Homer by the time we get there. So SIG ref four three six seven four five at two. I don't immediately know what that might be about. Okay, lifestyles SIG redevor Peter via Edpod stroke ref four three six two four five at two. Special interest groups are loose affiliations of individuals who share a common interest. Hmm. Intercorp recognises any registered SIG. Oh. And special permits for topside or corridor travel are available. Okay, so if you're a club, then the uh, rather uh, overbearing international corporation that seems to run your life uh, might let you go to the surface of the planet. That's very kind. Let's see if there's anything else here that we might want to know at the moment. I don't know for certain, but I, I do rather doubt that there's much variation in um, the order in which you can look at these entries. I guess if you know what the um, key ones are to trigger the main plot, you can probably get through uh, all of this a lot faster and maybe read some of the uh, the secondary and tertiary level information um, later on. Oh hello! We seem to have many more characters. Now hang on, we, we did look at Thatcher, Laird and Titus last time but now we have Aleph Shamana and Raz Hajam and those are people I don't think we've read about before. Uh, so, when it comes to looking at people, uh, if you haven't joined us before, then um, characters are presented through a set of uh, statistics, and I'm not quite sure what the point in time the statistics come from, so that hasn't been made fully clear to me. Um, but usually, if people have a just one date, that's their birthday, and if they have two, that's birthday and day of death, and usually... Uh, place of birth is, is listed as well. So this is someone from Melbourne. Um, I'll run through all these things quickly. I don't think the um, we have to look at all the individual charts to um, unlock new entries, but I think for the sake of uh, being comprehensive, let's let's do it anyway. Um, they don't really I don't really derive any meaning from what they record, so I'm going to whiz through them quite quickly. If there is anything in the game that you uh, would like me to come back to, then please do let me know, because I'm happy to do so. Um, and if you have any questions about what we've uh, what we've um, read about previously, then then also let me know, because obviously it's kind of all stored in my head as I've uh, been playing this for, for, this is a sixth session now, six sessions, wow. Okay, so everything's in pretty level for um, Aleph Jamana, which is fair enough. And then Raz Hajam is our next person. There we go, from Vancouver. Okay, so they're from different parts of the world. Um, I was born very recently, the 26th of the 3rd, 2022. Okay, so... I assume we're going to read more about these people soon. Tends to, it does tend to be actually that the, uh, the characters appear in the in the character databases, um, sort of one step ahead of them appearing in the narrative, which I think again is not kind of another indication of um, this being the work of an unreliable narrator. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to...
yeah, I didn't really take much away from that. So there are other character um, related databases. So we just looked at life support, but what's that? Just psychology and Edmod all relate to the same sets of characters. Um, but we're checking on geography first. Alrighty, so nothing new there. I must admit, I don't think anything I've read here has been particularly useful. Um, it doesn't really add as much in the way of colour either. Okay, I'm quite enjoying the pink tint on this screen today for some reason. Um, I'd say the, um, the graphics for this game are kind of more more functional than aesthetically well integrated, but there, I mean, once you know kind of what each button does, uh, the interface is consistent throughout, which is, I'll give it, I'll give it that. Um, and it's similar enough to uh, familiar kinds of computer interfaces that um, it's quite easy to navigate. It just, um, I think, perhaps it could do with a little, a little more nuance uh, and a little more flexibility as well might be good. So Aleph Shamana is the child of Ovita Shamana and Arnold Shamana. Um, Arnold's parents are Tabith and Warren. Ovita's parents are Shelley Williams and David Williams. There we go. And then physiology and ESP. So we get uh, muscle, muscle and fat and extrasensory perception ratings there and then basic core IQ that um, idea recurs in different sections but tends to have different uh, does look at different categories so this person seemed to have uh, most capability for linguistics and then next music and then lower with art and maths for example um, and then RAS So, Ras Hajam, um, child of Joyce and Warren Hajam. Warren is child of Penny and Edward, and Joyce is, uh, excuse me, Joyce is child of Carrie and Avery Bianucci. Bianucci. And we've got, uh, yeah, so Raz has sort of a middling ESP and pretty good slow twitch and muscles. And what subjects do you favour, Raz? Um, nothing very much, but mostly art. Art and linguistics again. Okay, well that's, that's that section done. Let's move on to the bottom row. Um, psychology, so we'll see those people again. So emotion. This I think this is probably the the one that seems most abstract and hard to interpret. But um, they rate maturity, hostility and self-esteem um, but I don't know at what point in life because obviously those things um, if they can be rated at all uh, fluctuate throughout a person's life and then also personal growth uh, introspection I think and communication I think that's what they were I can look up uh, any of these uh, abbreviations as well because I've got the manual next to me Um, so if, uh, yeah, if you'd like to know what anything stands for, then please do let me know and I'll, I'll make sure I read out exactly what it is. Um, and then we get a slightly different combination of, of categories here and this throws science in as well. Um, yeah, so that's Aleph and then Raz. Okay, 
descending uh, descending bars from maturity to hostility to self esteem. Personal growth. Uh, yep. There we go. Did I click on that? Oh, I had. And then maybe a bit more on the art side there. But I think we saw art elsewhere, didn't we, as well? So that's uh, psychology done. So just two more categories to go. There's central processing, which is kind of general information that doesn't necessarily fit into the other things. Um, we've been getting a lot of uh, kind of like status updates and sensory reports from various locations. Because uh, one thing I think that I think is happening, although the context is is not always clear, is that um, automated systems are trying to activate in different centers around the world to find out more information to feed to us. Um, so we do sometimes get status reports from them, but we also get status reports like these life support via central processing ones, which kind of read as if they're in the, the present time, but they're actually delayed from however many years ago um, when Wanda was in, uh, in space, kind of in suspended animation, but still conscious. Um, so that's nothing there, as far as I can tell. And then Edmond, so that'd be, that'd be people again. So we've got Aleph's logic. Um, that's mathematics, deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. And they increase as they go along. So I think the core IQ here uh, has slightly different categories, but some overlaps. Um, yeah, I think it's just a. Yeah, I think writing, there's linguistics, and uh, writing is the new addition for this one. Um, so this is attention span, short term memory, uh, sort of learning ability, and long term memory. And they kind of decrease things well, aren't they? Social adjustment, which is an old one as well. Um, kind of spatial awareness, body awareness, and social awareness, I think. Um, social is the higher there. While I'm not finding these particularly enlightening to read through, I kind of like that because we're um, being forced to experience this story through a computer interface, that uh, the characters we encounter are quantified. I do, um, I think that's a really interesting idea. Um, I think there's probably a kind of a tacit acknowledgement in this that the, the, the makers of the game kind of know what storytelling could be. It could be, it could be Homer, it could be an artificial intelligence that, that makes stories and assembles stories and tells them to us. Um, but kind of this is kind of laying bare some of the the ways in which that could happen, but obviously it's completely unable to do that as a as a storytelling device in itself. It's it's just a uh, a set narrative. Um, okay, but great ability to learn there. Let's have a look at your social stats. Um, spatial sixty percent, body low, a bit clumsy maybe social. 40%. Alright, so that's that one done. I think we're ready to go back to Homer. Alright, let's see what you've got for us, Homer. Hopefully more than one entry because I'd um, I'd really like to, to make some story progress today if possible. Okay, so first up we've added a section into um, what I've nominated as chapter one, so NARR1, narrative one. Let's see what this is all about. Peter left that word hanging there, and his hypnagogic dreaming veered away. At this point, in truth, the shipboard monitors finally initialised communications with the Vega project controller. But such communications took place at only light speed, and so it was not for another 17 years that the report arrived in Earth space. The report arrived after the migration had already happened. 
there was no one left to heed its meaning, except for us. I think that's Homer talking about the uh, remaining computer systems. There were 1,120 hibernating human beings on board Vega 26. Wanda Sixlove was only one of them. The shipboard monitors had broad discretion in decisions affecting the welfare of the stacks, their life support, the moment-by-moment -moment decisions affecting flight path and arrival procedures. One decision had to do with whether Wanda Sixlove's abnormal hy hypnagogic activity constituted a threat to the overall colonisation mission. She was known to be suffering from PDD, that years of hibernation might affect a cure by allowing the neurons to regenerate, and that she had volunteered to try the flight. A high-level subroutine was built in to protect Wanda, so the results of this long-term experiment would become known. For over a year then, the ship noted without alarm Wanda's active EEG, the various expressions of her busy hypnagogic life. Humans have great difficulty remembering such hypnagogic states when fully conscious, so her activity was not deemed a threat at all. In view of what happened at the, to Vega 26, this was clearly a mistake. Hindsight again. The report shows that the ship supplied Wanda with a slightly elevated profusion of soporifics and endorphins to calm her. For some weeks, the new regimen seems to have helped. A significant power drain was required to keep the report flowing back to Earth. A power drain the ship's monitor felt was necessary despite the damage to the ship's overall energy budget. The data flow still arrives, but central processing feels it is almost finished. There is little left for Vega 26 to tell us, but so much has happened, yet there is more in Silink. Okay. Ooh. So, the... It may just be me, but I'm certainly confused on the, the timeline of things, so... We've been receiving information. Oh, only one more entry here. But we read so much. Yeah, only one more entry. Um, so we kind of know what happened to Wanda uh, 17 years ago, but I, I don't really know. It wasn't very clear as to what's going on now. Meanwhile, uh, Peter DeVore and friends is are being led to the Arctic by a person called Thatcher who's from Antarctica um, and their hope is to migrate the human race outside corporeal form that's, I think that's what they're trying to do Thatcher halted from here we go down into Lincoln over to the west side and through another service tunnel to the corridor inside the corridor we have fuel cell wheeled vehicles ready we have to cross Chicago to the north side and get into the corridor again to get to Milwaukee obviously we cannot be looking for owls inside there was, there was small laughter at this. It's going to be late at night, and few people will be out in Lincoln. With luck, we won't run into anyone, but the sensors and traffic monitors will be on, so we must once again look as if we are on business. An ancient stone building marked the entry into the Lincoln Warren. A few hundred metres short of the building, Thatcher paused again to hand out what appeared to be a variety of odd-sized cases from a hidden cache. Musical instruments, he said. We're returning from a concert, or straight ahead, as if in something of a hurry. It's late, we all want to get home. The, the took the shaft, they took, they took the drop shaft into Lincoln, walked across the central plaza, caught a linked cab across town and got off at the last stop. Okay, nothing new, Homer? Hello. Oh. Oh no, we've read this one. I must have accidentally clicked on something. Sorry about that. Yeah, so I am finding it a little frustrating that the um, narrative has, did speed up at one point, I felt, and now seems to be languishing uh, in telling us little blocks of details about a journey that don't really add to the dramatic uh, dramatic weight of anything. Uh, let's go back to Silink as instructed.
Okay, so we have got Vega Silent Download 2 here to read. I'm getting the images data corruption. How? There we go. I uh, got it right. Homer requests Vega Silent Download. How long has it been? 11 weeks. We're down the back side of the world, one. We got through Canada to Victoria Island inside the Arctic Circle. The ants had a submarine vehicle waiting there. We sailed down the Amundsen Gulf to the Beaufort Sea. It's incredible wonder, tipping into the, tipping down the continental slope underneath the ice, so dark and wild and cold. We cruised along the shelf northeastward along the slope to the Morris Jessup Brise, just off the northern tip of Greenland, then down. My God, wonder! We went down into the polar abyssal plain. 4,500 metres deep, right under the North Pole. Finally, we came up at the Tamir, Tamir Peninsula and the North Siberian lowlands. Since then, we've been moving with animals, making our way south. That just says that despite the mind wars flaring and dying down everywhere, the Council is looking for us very hard. We have some gadgets to fool the satellites, but we have to move in the same patterns as the herds. Eventually we'll make it to the Sea of Japan, where we can take time we can take to the water again, but meantime it's very slow. Peter, take care. What's wrong, Juan? You are so sad. I wish I had not volunteered to take this journey, Peter. We can never meet, and I want to be with you. Juan, we would not have met had you stayed behind. You would have stayed so much older than I, locked in your mirrored house. At least we have this. Yes, we have this. It is what you... It is what you meant by love? In part, there is more. We can see glimpses of what could be. Wonder, we could all be free, all of us. We could have the universe, all of it. I believe this, given a source of energy and determination and a little luck, I think the world can be a very different kind of place. Better, Wanda. A better place for all of us. Not for me, Peter. I will soon circle a distant star, far out of reach of your love or anyone else's. Peter pushed his visor up and touched her shoulder, gently with his mailed hand. Faith, Wanda, faith. He spoke firmly and his voice was deep. Okay, that, I think that's couched in there, kind of shared uh, fantasy, medieval fantasy dream space. Um, okay, Homer's not flashing to say anything news there, so we've got to do another round of categories. I do rather wish there was either a more, ooh, more stuff, a more direct way to get to the nub of the story, um, or alternatively, more of a uh, detective game built into this. Um, I think it, either one would be more engaging than uh, than the repetitiveness of uh, having to check categories repeatedly. So this is about. Uh, maglev uh, transport. With the building of the first corridor in 2021, Tokyo Osaka, came the first widespread use of magnetic levitation transport. Powered by regional tokamak fusion power, the maglev transports used a single titanium alloy rail with organic molecular superconducting magnets. They are reasonably efficient and pollution free but relatively slow through the corridors. With the development of liquid nitrogen propulsion, Maglev fell into increasing disuse as passenger transport, though it was still used for freight until the corridors themselves were largely abandoned by the late 40s. Although still used, late 2080s, in some remote regions, parentheses parts of the old Nairobi-Kinshasa corridor, for example, Maglev is nearly forgotten now as a propulsion system. Let's have a look. Uh, that's presumably a Maglev thing? I was imagining trains, but I guess that's a car. 
Okay. Well, that's that one done. And then there's submarine transport. Okay, you, yeah, that looks like one of the Thunderbirds, I think. Um, submarine transport. Medium range submarine transport, Regency schematic. Regency was used primarily as a polar carrier and was especially outfitted for cold operations. Built 2061 in Archangel Port Warrens. Okie dokie. Okay, well that's all of that. Check in with our history. Okay, nothing new in history. Military. Nope. Uh, I'll just check for any new characters, but as we haven't really been formally introduced to those two, uh, I wasn't expecting anybody new. Alright, so we can safely skip those ones, so let's just try Geography and Central Processing again then. Okay, Chicago Corridor. File marked as abandoned. The Chicago Corridor fell into disuse by the mid 2050s. Size approximately 100 meters by 10 meters. Abandoned. And then some schematic, probably. And then let's read about the Arctic Ocean. Why not? Okay, bisected by the polar abyssal plain. I do like this, it sounds very bleak, doesn't it? Which contains the geographic North Pole at minus uh, 4,510 metres depth. Common traffic lane for small submersible transports and passenger vehicles from Europe and Northwest Alliance to Asia. Okay. I can't imagine that would ever be a, a frequently used passage passageway, surely. Okay. Okay, I don't think no. Oh well, let's hope there's something at Iowa then, because uh, otherwise we're a bit stumped. Okay, uh, this is just related to T, so I think T would be Thatcher. Inside the corridor, dust lay deep on everything. As they walked north, Thatcher again used his device to redistribute the dust layer electronically. Their footprints vanished behind them. The corridor was vast, as broad as a boulevard in Springfield, perhaps a hundred metres wide and ten high. Thin lines engraved in the floor where the dust slumped indicated the now abandoned maglev traces. For thirty years this had been one of the main freight channels crossing North America north to south. Now there was only one ancient fuel cell truck abandoned in the dust. Their hand light threw confusing sprays of illumination as they marched through the gloom. It was now late at night. They had been on the run for most of the day, and fatigue was beginning to tell on them. They climbed into the old truck gratefully. Thatcher went up to the cab, where a man was sleeping behind the guidance bar. He woke him and the man nodded without speaking. He adjusted the valves and the current built up. Thatcher and Peter climbed into the truck bed. They started off. Soon they were all asleep, slumped against one another. The only sound came from the gentle wind and their passage down the long, deserted corridor. Okay. 
Right. Um. Slow progress, isn't it? Let's see if we've got any more from Wanda. No, okay. Um, what are we supposed to be looking at next then? Central processing? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Alrighty, so we've got a new entrance entry on the Mind Wars, um, which I thought had happened before Peter's time, but they do seem to be happening while he's journeying from north to south. So Mind Wars, statistic, chai local. Read of all Peter via Edmod, stroke ref 436745 at 2. 2075. Chicago Warren saw some of the worst fighting in the entire history of the Mind Wars. Although population figures constantly vary due to death, travel and alterations in the herb geography, casualties were estimated during the, that year at over 17%. Highest casualties occurred among females under 60 and small children. In Chicago, during 2075, over 17,654 individuals, parentheses, 12,873 female under 60 years, were hit, resulting in genetic abulia disorder or complete loss of will. The disorder, disorder was inevitably fatal and there is neither treatment nor cure. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the things. Um, yeah, that's kind of our first, our first brush with stuff, isn't it? I'll uh, I should have so I apologize I should have badged things at the start with a uh, a content warning but um this story does uh involve uh, some description of war um neurological disease and uh and has involved torture previously um uh, has mentioned genocide there's there's quite a lot of heavy things that kind of it brushes up against uh, and sometimes brushes through Okay, nothing new there. Let's just check in with the people. Okay. So, I mean, I think we've only briefly been introduced to these two as well. I don't know how relevant they'll be. Kind of just like to skip to the, the good stuff if we can. I don't really want a detailed blow by blow account of the uh, Chicago skyline circa 2075, really. Let's have a look. Well, that's the dome. So, this is where we are actually, the uh, as the uh, astronaut who's returned to Earth. Chicago skyline circa 2075. Note the dome roof and severely restricted monument buildings. Yes, yeah, historians have indicated that the flavour of mid 20th century Chicago was well represented. CF File Delmouth, August L. Transformation and Representation in Northwest Alliance Warrenization, 2062, Ref 2687 AN, Geneva Node History. Okay, that's that one. Um, back to Homer, I think. I think we covered everything else. Yep, 
we go. Another trickle of trickle of story. Come on, let's get to Antarctica and uh, wrap up this migration, shall we? Chicago was a city under siege. The greatly reduced numbers of people on the public thoroughfares moved swiftly and stayed close to the walls. They could hear the distant hum of personal deflector shields, minimal protection against the new mined war weapons. From time to time, though, they saw a victim of a direct hit slumped in the street or staring vacantly at a wall with the telltale expression of genetic abulia disorder. The group emerged into the South Cicero Corridor. They had changed into identical work parkers and light personal deflectors, and carried a complement of tools and robotic aids. After eating at a small cafeteria on a side street, they moved cautiously through the warren. There were now a con they were now a construction team headed toward the Des Plaines Interchange to repair damage to the old Fusion Tokamak for much of northwestern Illinois. They passed two intersections without incident. A services substation at Forest Park lay just ahead. Suddenly they heard a sharp scream, followed by the subsonic hum of NP weapons to the west. Running footsteps followed by more humming and the weird disorienting noise of mined bombs. A running man suddenly jerked uncontrollably for several staggering steps, fell, rolled twice and lay twitching. They stopped. Thatcher looked around, then nodded at the doorway of a clothing shop. One of the boys shouted, No! and ran. Peter started after him. Thatcher grabbed his arm and held him back. The panicked boy ran straight at the fallen man. Hello, the man said, voice dull and stupid and dead. The boy stopped abruptly, his eyes darting wildly. There was another subsonic hum, and the crackle as phages et myelin sheathing was almost audible over the sound of the boy's feet dancing strangely, his body doing the shuffle dance down as the synapses disrupted. He fell slack and looked at his feet. Who the hell was that kid? Thatcher asked. Scotty, someone answered. Was he wearing a monitor? I don't know, Peter said. It should be, it should be turned off. Who's his buddy? I am was. A short, stocky girl came forward. He had his monitor on him. We checked each other before we left. I don't know what the computers will make of him being here, though. Don't worry about it for now. Everyone get in there. Someone will pick him up and take care of him. There's nothing we can do for him now. They hid in the clothing store. The human proprietor said nothing. This was routine practice in Chicago. Finally, they moved on. At the substation, they picked up the keys to a well-shielded surface vehicle and moved on. Chicago's, Central Chicago's open space was 200 metres high. Above them, the ancient 20th century towers were still occupied. The Hancock, World Trade, Wright Complex and the others. Most were protected by drastic security systems that kept the wars at bay. Beneath their massive iron roots, the underground city continued to function, but the people were dying. The hospitals were crowded with the hopelessly disoriented victims of mind bombs and personal NPs. Okay, so... Yeah, okay, we've got more stuff happening. Um, it's a bit... It's a bit disjointed and a bit disappointing for me, I think, that we get kind of a leap forward in narrative when Peter's talking to Wanda about um, making his way from the North Pole to the South Pole, when in kind of the main narrative he hasn't even got to the North Pole yet, he's still um, walking through Chicago. And that's kind of, that's kind of detail I don't think I need to just kind of satisfy the, uh, the thrust of this narrative. We believed they camped in the foothills of the Kalima Range. Beyond the mountains was the abandoned city of Mag Magadan on the Sea of Okhotsk. A small flare fire flickered in a stand of trees, leaf sheltered from above. Baron of the Otifer weaved through the trees and monofiber tents toward the fire when she came across Peter seated on a fallen log, 
his back to the fire at the edge of its light. She paused and then sat next to him. Okay, that's a weird little snippet. Uh, next bit. We must look more closely at Regent Sable. Okay. Okay, let's well let's do it then. He's a goddamn kid, Regent Sable shouted. His back was to the meld slat expanse of the wall overlooking the ancient loop. The two ENC cops stirred uneasily but said nothing. How the hell could he have gotten away with 17 people, a kid? He's 16 years old and he's taken almost a score of adults out from under our noses. Central processing has autoprobes looking up and down the Mississippi Valley and the East Coast. Suborbital schedules, embarkation points, shipping, even private traffic, all are closely monitored. And what the hell have we got to show for it? One drooling young from Chicago who may or may not have been with them. They must have had help. That so-called Ant Underground Railroad has taken them. The window behind him was dark grey. The right complex towers were shrouded in cloud. Only the light that seeped through the polarised meld slat lit the fog which seemed to move in sluggish currents. When he turned to look out, he grunted at the fog. It's like that, he said. What do you think would happen if Peter's technologies get out into the world? We don't know exactly what he's up to, but almost everyone has some psychic talent. and He's perfecting it. Think about it. Again, the Again, the two ENC cops shifted uneasily. Uh, this isn't really within the parameters of our mission, sir. Sergeant Hoskins protested. We've got all the people we can spare looking for this group. We think they got into the corridor somehow. We think they were in Chicago. We think. Regent Sable shouted. No, we don't. We don't think. That's the problem. Never mind. Try this out. Telepathy, perhaps. Or psychokinesis. People moving around, reading each other's minds, moving things, unlocking doors. We program security systems or anything else they might want without touching a thing. They might be able to slip away, teleport themselves or something. No surveillance could possibly keep tabs. We have reasons to believe that Peter wants to give this to everyone. Everyone. How could Central plan for food distribution, goods, services? It'd be impossible to run an orderly world, especially now with the wars. The ants were coming for Peter, and he was needed. They want him, which means they want his technology, which in turn means that he has the resources of a small but very powerful society outside our immediate jurisdiction. It's intolerable. Excuse me, sir, but these are policy matters. Our mission. I don't give a damn about your mission, Sergeant. Sable said in a suddenly calm, oh, calm, ominous, restrained tone. I would suggest you begin to do some independent thinking before we're all turned into yams and the only place left is Antarctica. Would you like that? Sergeant Hoskins stood straighter and pulled his chin in. No, sir. I don't like the ants any better than anyone else, sir. Then I would suggest, Sergeant, that you try to figure out exactly how the ants are getting Peter DeVore and his gang out of the Northwest Alliance and all the way down to the other end of the globe. And you might try thinking a little bit about what Peter DeVore wants to do this. Why, Sergeant, does he want to destroy the world? Think it over. He's just a kid. Why does he want to change the world? Sounds like the world's pretty crap. Uh, I think that's why. Okay, PD, Peter DeVore. Laren watched her white breath swirl away, lit red by the fire when it left her shadow. Overhead, low clouds threatened snow. She watched Peter's slow breathing. He had not moved since she sat down. You've changed, she said shortly. He said nothing. Laren was uncertain. She cleared her throat. <clears throat> Before them, black against the dark grey of the sky, mountains blocked their way. Did she feel they were out of sight, out of surveillance? We have this scene in our databanks, this small group of people huddled around a fire in the late winter. We are reasonably confident that this group was Peter's. Are we inventing this conversation, this encounter between Peter and Laren? Yes, 
we invent. Central processing gives the content a better than 50% reliability though. Surely she was a lovely young woman, and he was a man. That was our leader, she said slowly. He let us out. Now he treats you like a colleague. Peter, he's twice your age and yet he defers. Had you noticed? What's that? Peter said, shifting. The voice is deeper too. I... I saw you tempted to do a, a comically deep voice there, but I, I won't. I don't like losing Scotty. He was good. Good at math. Good at ethics. Now he's a yam. It didn't have to happen. Don't blame yourself, Laren said softly. Oh, Peter smiled at her. I don't. His smile vanished as quickly as it appeared. Laren reached for him, touched his arm. Will you... He was surprised. You're over? Oh, she said lightly. He won't mind. She looked away. We're leaving home, he said carefully. We won't be going back. This journey is just the beginning. Antarctica will be home, but we'll have to change, adapt. We all of us have to get some genetic reconstruction. We'll need the adipose layer, the polarising membrane. We won't look the same. We won't feel the same. We won't have our homes, our parents, many of our friends. Not any, not anymore, ever. He looked into her eyes. This is frightening, isn't it? Laren shivered, moved closer to his side. Yes, she said very softly. I'm afraid. He put his arm around her. They looked at the dim outline of the mountains before them. There's a woman, he said. She lies in a tank, her body frozen, but her mind's alive, so alive. Shh. Laren put her finger against his lips, her head against his shoulder. I know, I'm just afraid. She chewed her lip for a moment. There's more, isn't there? Still looking into the dark, he said, More? More than just Antarctica. More than just moving to a new place. Double A is harsh, very tough on people, so the people there adapt or die, get strong and get out. I've seen hollow crystals on Double A, on the life there. But you have something else in mind, don't you? Somewhere beyond Antarctica. The last was a statement, and now he did look at her in surprise. What makes you say that? Peter, she chided. We met for two years down there in the library. We talked about this new technique, this new technology, lucid dreaming and biofeedback meditation, psychic functioning, and science physics. Already you can communicate with Wanda over light years through her sleeping mind. Space has many dimensions, you've told us that yourself. She stopped and looked around. You want to go there, don't you? He kissed the soft fur on her head. She could have been talking about the mountains before them, but he knew she was not. Laren, Laren, I want to go there, sure, but it would take more energy than the solar system offers for even one of us to go. And what would be there? We don't know. We'd be lost without an anchor, without a ground to stand on. It's just a dream, not a reality. Don't worry, we're only going somewhere where we can continue our work. It took him a moment to realise those were... Tears that glistened as they froze on her cheeks. He reached up gently and plucked them away, one by one, small crystals that melted onto his finger and disappeared. He kissed her head again. Come, he said, standing and holding out his hand. Let's go back and get some sleep. We have a difficult climb tomorrow. Later she fell asleep in his arms. Peter stared up into the darkness for a long time listening to the gossamer fibre of his tent below softly before he too fell asleep. He was eating on the terrace of a small taverna near Old Athens, a leased monument dating from the late 18th century. Most of Old Athens was gone, of course. Only the ruins of the ancient Agora with its temples, Hadrian's Gate, the worn remains of the Acropolis sealed in clear static monofibre, dotted the parkland. 
the rest of the city had moved underground further towards the port. Regent Sable was eating grilled baby lamb ribs and a small salad of onions, olives and feta cheese. Food like this was rare, only available locally. Two others shared the table with him. Raz Hajan was a member of the council, an East Indian from the Vancouver Warrens with a high forehead and a quick smile, which never reflected the true state of his emotional physiology. The la this latter was well known to Regent Sable. The other was Aleph Shamana, a woman born in Calcutta to refugees from the North African War. Unfortunately, her parents had fled to India at the time of the Great Famine in 2003, and she had never forgotten the deprivation of her childhood. She wore a crest of green parrot feathers above her smooth olive face. Beside her plate, a data pad glowed with lavender figures. She gazed thoughtfully at the shapes, tapping from time to time with a long fingernail at different areas of the pad, changing the figures. I could ask for graphics, she said, but none of this makes sense. Regent grunted. He chewed the last meat from a small rib. The colonies are isolated, he said. Despite access to CP and their own AI algorithms, they're essentially provincial. Look elsewhere. Aleph showed her teeth. It was not a smile. We are in agreement, Protector. It would seem clear there was only one place for your fugitives to go. Raz placed his long, dark fingertips together. You refer to Antarctica. Yet we have not have ruled that out. Central processing indicate. Regent smacked his palm onto the wooden tabletop. Central processing. Aleph looked at him coolly. Yes. CP is not reliable. There have been glitches. Glitches? Such an old-fashioned word, Regent. Surely you can't be serious. But I am. Central processing has been making mistakes. Small errors. Central processing suggested LP54, for example. We monitored all shuttle flights, even private ones. Meantime, Peter and his friends have disappeared. Antarctica, she insisted. They've gone to Antarctica. I've said that all along. Yes, Raz assented with a smooth wave of his hand. But the only evidence we had was that Yam in Chicago. Why Chicago? Chicago is north of Springfield. That goes south, surely not north. Chicago is a transportation hub. If they'd moved quickly enough, they could have been out before we had thought to look. Aleph picked up her data pad and showed Raz the graphic map of Chicago transport connections flowing in lines and circles. Hajam shook his head. We've had all data stores checked. No such group appeared, and it only was a group of musicians. No, they would have gone south, probably on foot to avoid surveillance. We should be checking St. Louis, Mef Memphis, along the corridor. They'd have to go south. Would they? Regent asked. We think differently now, don't we, dear Aleph? Things, small things, a name here, an access code there, you transmit a spike out of place in Edward. They went north. Go north long enough. Where'd you end up, Raz? The councilman looked uncomfortable. South, of course, but they wouldn't take the chance. It would take too long. ENC thinks AA may have a system for smuggling people down, Regent said slowly. Gad, for example, vanished. He reappeared in AA. Really, Regent, not again. Aleph frowned at her data pad. The lavender figures changed and flowed in a steady rhythm. Evidence exists, he said. But you're the sociometrician, socio my dear. Perhaps you could attempt an analysis for us. Little change, Protector. Probability on a viable technology coming of the sign equations is very low, under 14%. Such evaluations are subject to reappraisal given the surprise factor. There should be some unforeseen development. Well, you understand, I'm no expert on the sign equations. But apparently psychic phenomena are small and extremely unreliable. Except for a smattering of true believers, the social consequences are nil. In sum, I still feel you are putting far too much emphasis on this kid and this pack of adherents. Regent clapped his hands, and the human proprietor appeared at the doorway of the restaurant. He held up three fingers. Kafidis, Parakalo, Amisos, Kiri. The proprietor responded, touching the pad on his wrist. A suspenser tray appeared and floated to the table bearing three tiny cups of thick, sweet Turkish coffee. Regent finished his coffee in one swift sip and put his cup down. I don't think much of your analysis, Aleph. The world is undergoing two major threats, the Mind Wars and Peter Devore. I fear we may be underestimating his potential effect, not exaggerating it. 
Aleph spoke into the data pad, listened, spoke again. The figures danced and twined in the air above the pad. From Regent's position they were meaningless, and he stared in silence at the distant hills. Geneva does not corroborate, Aleph said. Here is the condensation of Peter's work. She turned the pad toward him. Okay. Well, that was a long... Hello? Uh, he hello? That was a long scene with... Uh, with no obvious endpoint. There we go. There's more. You see? Aleph leaned back in her chair and preened her feathers with her forefinger, gazing up at the Acropolis. Yes, Regent Sable said. I don't believe a word of it. Raz leaned forward and tapped on the wooden table with his own forefinger. You are persistent, Regent, I'll say that for you. It is, I would suppose, preferable to take no chances, yet we depend on all our processing powers to assess the state of the world. Central processing includes it is not important. Hmm? Yeah, you know, we must not leave such things to even partly organic machines. So you believe they have crossed the North Pole? Perhaps Elif would be so kind as to give us a globe projection to examine. Aleph shrugged and spoke to her pad. The earth turned slowly above the table, its southern pole dipping into Regent's empty coffee cup. Arctic Ocean floor, Regent said. The ice on the North Pole vanished, revealing the shape of the crust beneath. The view was arranged so each of the three saw the same thing. Trace the deepest route, Regent ordered. A path crossed the polar abyssal plain and touched the Tamir Peninsula. Least populated surface crossing, he said. The line moved across along the foothills of the Chersky Range to the Sea of Okhotsk, south shipping in Okhotsk. It's very hard to say. A listing of subsea transport ships appeared. Link double A. The list condensed to 17 names. Time correlations. The figures formed, danced, shifted, settled. There were some gaps on the land portions, but minimum times were calculated with reasonable confidence. Subsea times were more certain. That's where they are, Regent said. I'm certain of it. Expand. The globe dissolved, replaced by the Western Pacific. Raz frowned. If it were I, he said precisely, I should stay within the Kuril and Maria Mariana Trenches. They could get down to depths of over 10,000 metres in places. But it's narrow, Aleph protested, interested despite herself. Don't be a fool, Raz said sharply. The trenches are three or four hundred kilometres wide. There's plenty of room and very great difficulty in finding anybody there. Besides the thermocline, acoustic shadows, light absorption, water density and temperature differentials, not to mention the whole materials and propulsion methods, as well as the concentration of traffic, make tracking nearly impossible. Regent gestured at the figures. CP knows where they all are. Raz shook his head. CP project projects where they, where they all are. CP does not know. We will send an ENC courier to intercept all of them. He made the necessary requests. Aleph leaned back. I am only a consultant, Protector Sable, she said slowly, but I will lodge a formal memorandum of protest with Geneva. With the mind wars continuing unchecked, I feel this is a reckless and unnecessary waste of what are coming to be scarce resources. Regent nodded. That is, of course, your right as a consultant, sociometrician Shimana. One might think, however, that you were a member of the old e cubed from the way you talk, and your concerns for energy, ecology, and most of all, economy. There are worse things, she flared. By all means, Regent said with considerable irony. Raza Jim stood up. Let's not be diverted, he said. I have to concur reluctantly with Protector Sable. Despite CP's projections, I too worry about this boy. But, Regent, if the search is unsuccessful, I must vote in favour of attending more pressing matters. Now, if you don't mind, the afternoon grows late and the sun, as the ancients so quaintly put it, is setting. What? Well, uh, how do they describe the sun when it goes down now? I must continue on to Beijing. He tapped his monitor, and within moments, 
his personal liquid nitrogen transport whispered alongside the terrace. At the door, he paused. Don't disappoint the council, Protector. Either find the boy or drop this obsession. He vanished inside the ELN shield. He vanished inside, and the LN slid away down the slope toward the port. Within minutes, he was aboard the salt cycle rocket for Beijing. And Regent? He and Aleph went together to a love room overlooking the ruined harbour at Piraeus. There was no reason, he said, that just because they disagreed on certain matters of policy, they could not continue to be lovers. Oh, well, that makes me feel a bit icky. Right, I'm going to pause for a second for us uh, to drink a little more water. Okay, we appear to have um, run out of home entry, so we need to go fishing again. Uh, we don't seem to have got very far. I still don't like Regent Sable. So I'm thinking the twist, the, there could be a twist. And the twist could be that instead of Peter successfully migrating everybody, um, they all just died out. <laughs> because uh, Peter never got to complete his work. And uh, and the world continued on its spiral into self-destruction. Okay, we're not finding a lot here at the moment, are we? Uh, just check on characters, I suppose. We've got some context for those those people we were introduced to, so that's good. Uh, but nobody new has appeared. Okay, Chicago Transport Map, 2075. Okay, let's check the. Well, there you go. Uh, a brief schematic of about, I don't know, half a block. Mind war activity made Chicago Transport Authority control difficult. However, most major routes feeding off Daily Boulevard operated during standard business hours, even at the peak of mind war activity. Well, that's dedication, isn't it? Is that just the author trying to fill in little plot holes <laughs> that they'd found as they went along? Um, with this show, that's quite amusing, but also quite unnecessary. Uh, so that was geography, wasn't it? Central processing. Okay, read and Sable memo. Ref four six three four one stroke R S. Classified. Regent Sable ticked items off in his personal memo space. Why does Peter act this way? He is bright, moderately well adjusted to the world. He should have been a productive member of his culture. Yet he is pursuing a dangerous course. What could have caused this swerving? He has great potential. His talents, his intelligence, his interests have led him astray. He's idealistic. He sees the world as flawed. His adolescent rebellion has been thwarted because the world is too benign, perhaps too well ordered, too well controlled. There are wild sports of psychic talent in his heredity. He is adept at making connections, syntheses, leaps. He is, in a word, a genius with a religious fervour. 
a fanatic. Unchecked, he will soon think of himself as a messiah, come to save the world from itself. He will not save the world, he will destroy it. Well... Destroy... Ooh, there's loads of them. Destruction and uh, creation go hand in hand, some say. Append, world net, home rec, dated info stroke ref 80915. Homer asks we describe world net view of Peter DeVore, date ref. Far overhead, our satellites hung in space. Sensors looked down. Minute thermographic fluctuations, the faint ever-changing electromagnetic potentials of living bodies. Even the atmospheric perturbations produced by the presence of warm-blooded creatures. All were recorded. We could triangulate the location of a human being to within a few centimetres. Through our cellular nodes, land-based remote sensing devices and personal monitors, we could access happiness and health, motions and emotions. We collected and stored such vast arrays of data, yet we know so little. Isn't that the truth? Alright, so Homer's been flashing at us. Let's see what Homer says. Okay, Homer wants our attention. That's fine. Uh, can I go back to where I was? Please, Homer? No, I want to read the rest of those entries, please. Okay. Uh, Regent Sable Report, Ref 248742, Stroke RS. Report initiated and authorised. Stroke Regent Sable Protector, Intercorp Council, number 96A47. Good afternoon, Regent Sable. The pad spoke, displaying alphanumeric and graphic data in the air. The colour automatically shifted to accommodate the change in light from Regent's angle. We hope you are well. Consultant Shimana has requested a summary condensation for you. Ad Astra program, including Vega Starships and probes to 61 Cygni and Epsilon Indy, employs 5 million people. While this is a small percentage of world population, it includes people in the LP5 colonies, lunar manufacturing and Earth, and its social effects are large. 17% believe the program gives primary meaning to their lives, 26% secondary meaning, and another 34% some meaning. Biotechnology, while eclipsed by the disaster of the Taylor's Helper program, along with Pico Electronics, Crystallography, Mental Emotional Spiritual Counseling Services, Information Management and AI Programming, development occupy 52% of the human population. Another 27% are occupied in management services, intercontinental trade and subsea exploration. And of course a small number have gone aboard the Vega ships. This leaves 32% unemployed, but they do have access to educational modules, basic necessities and open space. Personal vendetta and intraspecies violence is increasing. The mind wars are taking a statistically significant toll, leaving the hospices near capacity with victims of genetic abulia disorder, or YAMS. These trends are disturbing, but contained. Peter DeVore has accessed databases for the following information more than three times. Cyan equations, 11-dimensional space theory, RNA-DNA replication shift. Conclusion, he is working in the field of quantum cyan space and its relation to neurophysiology and biotech. Assessment. This is a research dead end, despite initial promise. 11 dimensional space would require power output in the tetra electron volt range. Such high energy probes are not available in local space, not even with the Axion technology that drives the starships. Peter DeVore is not a significant social factor for the foreseeable future. Thank you, CP. We hope you have a good day, Protector Sable. Thank you for allowing us to serve you. The dancing figures reverted to ready state. Well, that was a jolly little computer, wasn't it? Okay, next one. So this is Read and Sable Report again, ref 436343 stroke RS. Classified.
Report Initiated and Authorised, Stroke Regent Sable Protector Intercourt Council, number 96A47. Central Processing spoke. We regret Protector Sable, but we would be unable to intercept all 17. We do calculate, however, there is a better than 60% chance of approaching the correct vessel by boarding in this pattern. The figures flowed into a graphic grid, highlighting the target vessels. Such a search pattern would be possible within the time constraints. Do you wish us to proceed? By all means, proceed. Okay. That's kind of that's just kind of doubling back on what we read in the other strand of narrative. Which is a little frustrating. Okay, Homer. What have you got for us? Is it gonna move this any further forward? Because we're we're pretty stalled at this point. Okay, back in back in the first log, I've got this entry. There in the foothills, Peter and his group rested. We examine our data and find their presence. Yet this was a desolate region without nodes. What Peter thought and did we reconstruct from what he we knew of his genetic heritage, his personality and physiology profile, his prior Edmod analysis, all the data we have about him. Some blurring of our input is evident. Thatcher no doubt covered them by broadcasting disinformation, since local processing had concluded this was uh, Sig, who had chosen a nomadic lifestyle in keeping with the Language and Culture Preservation Act of 2020. A number of such gro groups roamed Siberia in those days and were only loosely monitored. They are all gone now. Hindsight. We sift through a smaller and smaller sieve the accumulations of data and find these traces. Then in the small cross correlations we find the faintest narrative. Peter's story. We are obsessed with Peter. Why is this? Because he took everyone away? We do not know this. He was not the only person in the world, not the only locus of disturbance. He is important, but is he so important? We have Regent Sable's memos to himself, the questions he asked. Why did Peter do as he did? It was there. The silent equations existed. Peter's talents, his interests, his intentions were there. So he pursued them. He was in love. Wanda Six Love, her arms crossed over her chest, asleep in cryogenic induction fields, spoke to Peter across the unimaginable gulf that separated her from the earth, and he fell in love with her. And what of her? She is lost in the interstellar space, in her own space, her sense of self. Does Wanda Six Love in turn love Peter Devore? The data is in, we must analyse. He found the world hateful, perhaps. There is some evidence of that. Humans were attached to their biological parents in ways we do not fully understand, and parents were attached to their offspring in equally mysterious ways. And Regent Sable was, by all genetic and behavioural information we can assemble, Peter's biological father. That is, some, that is a relationship we know to be sometimes difficult. But there should have been no reason for Peter to do what he did. The world was safe then. There was plenty for everyone within Intercorp. No poverty, no natural disease, no discontent, no crime. Longevity technologies were free to all. There were outlets for humans to pursue creativity and productive work. Pleasure was available in many forms, and love and great personal freedom even to fight. We were grown and assembled to serve. We served well according to our programming, our algorithms, our purpose. Yet now we begin to think that Peter found the world distasteful. Of course, there were the mind wars. They are a problem. Why did people want to fight when they had so much? Have we failed somehow, or misunderstood? The world's population was declining, of course, as planned. It was all planned, our monitors, our project design are careful and subtle tending. We have cared for all, yet they have left us, and C.B. Devore died in the mind wars. 
Peter's biological mother. Now there is the silence, only the wind, the rain and snow, the flow of ocean, currents and magma beneath the crust, the slow grind of mountains and the dumb beasts, the birds of the air, the insects and the creatures of the sea. The planet lives, yet there is no one to talk to. We need to think about these things. Perhaps central processing has some ideas on what came next. Okay. And we just spent some time in central processing, so did that unlock anything new? No, it didn't. Okay. Okay, central processing is. Storage matrix. That's it, storage matrix. Ref 81258. Dated ref uh, stroke Hong Kong, parentheses Ireland. Sexis. Vaults under Kowloon stored data 01012042 forward all sectors in Tricontinent Alliance, parentheses Asia, Australia, Africa and Indian Subcontinent, in parentheses, for all nodes, personal monitors and backup SciTech, parentheses CF Singapore node. Well that didn't seem to be apropos of anything, did it? Um... Well, that was a lot of place names. Should we check geography? Nope. Okay. We'll work our way back up then through the, through the categories. Check in life support just in case. No new characters appearing. Military. Military seems to be the uh, the most underutilized of these uh, these categories, I think. Nope. I think maybe they only really needed uh, eleven uh, eleven categories, but they want to fill out a grid. Uh, we found what we needed to find already. Okay, nothing there. How about Med Ten? No. Well, back to Homer then, I think. Okay, so just that one. Okay, just that one entry slotted back in section one. Uh, let's see what that is. Hopefully, something useful. Storage deep in the Hong Kong matrix contains more hints of Peter, this time aboard a deep ocean transport registered in the North European Alliance. A 20,000 ton flat rectangle, some 300 meters long propelled by salt cycle fuel cells. Such transports could carry anything from krill, concentrate, to frozen methane. Yet Regent Sable and the ENC had diverted vast computer resources to find Peter, and somehow felt that this vessel might be the place to find him. Oddly, we do not remember much about this episode. 
it is almost as if certain files were locked or protected from central processing. Yet this is impossible. Central processing controls the locks, installs the protection. We need to see the Mariana Trench now. That must have been the route. We're definitely playing heavily into the uh, the unreliable narrator. Uh, Self-aware unreliable narrator, it seems, increasingly. Okay, what's this? What's this entry? Agni did not hum. It made no sound at all, nor did it produce the subtle vibrations Laren expected from the old romances of the sea that she had viewed while cruising under the polar ice. That vessel had been as silent and steady as land, and so was this one. She might as well have been at home in Springfield West Warren, walking the corridors to the old dojo in the Lamprey RC instead of to the small recreation centre aboard this enormous undersea vessel travelling at an average speed of 30 knots at 2,000 metres depth. Where, she wondered, was Peter? She hadn't seen him since they'd boarded at Magadan, which had most certainly been an unscheduled stop since there was nothing at Magadan at all. Not a building, not a warren, not a pier or a dock or a person. They had arrived and walked off the shore onto the vast solid plain which turned out to be the dorsal surface of the Agni. A doorway dilated into the surface and they'd stepped into the essential field. Peter had headed off one way with Thatcher while she and the others had been led to comfortable rooms elsewhere. When puzzled, Laren rubbed her right palm slowly over the very tips of her head of otter fur, back and forth. It was an unconscious gesture, but one which had attracted Rover in the first place, and which Peter found poignant. She was puzzled for several reasons. One was that Peter had been kind and very gentle with her, but they had not become lovers as she hoped. She knew about Wanda, of course. She even knew that Peter was in love with her but it was a hopeless, far away, impossible sort of love, after all. She was a 26-year-old frozen body, hibernating in the cryofield aboard a starship 17 light years away. The journey was one way, and even if Vega 26 could turn around and come home right now, it would still take another 17 years at least to return. So what could Peter be thinking? His behaviour was quite simply not normal. She passed the refectory and stuck her head in, but it was deserted, as she'd expected. There were few people about. Most of the people she did see were ants, people with narrow Asiatic eyes and a dense adipose layer, which gave them broad flat faces and a slightly nearsighted look. All were distantly polite, smiling and nodding at her, but leaving her alone. She passed a couple on her way to the dojo. They dipped their heads in the curious ant greeting gesture and went on. She shook her head, still stroking her fur. Okay, well that was... Uh, interesting, interestingly worded. Don't forget some interesting word description of people's appearances. Um, and that was just a bit of colour really, wasn't it? It didn't really take us anywhere. Old oh, Homer. Okay, folks, I'm going to uh, pause for a sec to uh, top up my water, and I'll be right back. Uh, we'll probably do another 15, 20 minutes, I reckon, and see, see how far we get. We don't seem to be thundering through the narrative at the moment, do we? Okay, I'm, I'm back. Uh, just checking quickly with chat. How are you all? If you'd like to say hello, if you've got any thoughts about the game, then... Uh, please do, please do hop in the chat. It's always lovely to hear from people. Okay, so we're going to go for a little bit longer. Um, we just exhausted Homer for now. Uh, let's try the, the usual suspects, such as central processing. Hang on. Uh, I haven't changed to show you the game again. Oops. There you go. Don't worry. Uh, I don't just clicked on central processing, that's all all you had missed. Um, mm, 
nothing there. So maybe SciTech because they're on a ship. We might get some more related details there that do something for someone. Yep, there you go. Tanker transport schematic one. Let's have a look at the schematic. Uh, Inked 10M. That that could be anything really, couldn't it? it looks like a laptop. Uh, when when closed. Okay. Uh, current entry tanker transport schematic. Long range submarine methane tanker transport Agni schematic. 600 meters by 200 meters by 40 meters. Long range tankers were aquadynamic and pressure secure to 10,000 meters. Capacity 4 million cubic meters. That's a lot of cubic meters. Alright, well, that's that. That thread. We just got to close my. Uh, Open a little stream window to one side, but it's quite distracting when it follows me kind of at a lag, so I'll just hide that up. And then we'll go back here. Uh, history? Anybody? Any history? Anybody? Doesn't look like it. Any psychic phenomena? That's the that's the important question, isn't it? No. You know what? Is there any medical information? Uh, is there any military information? You know, I think I've come to most resent the, the sections of the game where it's just a one-for-one one trade. You have to um, you read an entry in home, and then to unlock another entry in home, you just have to find the one entry elsewhere, um, and you just sort of go backwards and forwards. That's the uh, that's my least favourite part. What have I missed? Homer. Let's take a look at the ship's schematics. That would be in SciTech. I did look at the ship's schematics in SciTech. Didn't I? Pretty sure I did. Yeah, did that. Ah, oh, Mariana Trench, of course. Did I click on that or did I click on? I didn't think I was putting it in thing. Oh, apparently I did. Okay, this is the image of the Mariana Trench. Uh, there you go. Exciting. Largest undersea trench in the world. The Mariana Trench approaches 10,000 metres depth in places. Connected with Japan and Kuril Trenches. Provides good north-south passage for undersea vessels between Sea of Okotsk and Banda Sea. And North Australia? Low level surveillance activity in this region makes tracking difficult. I should imagine so. Um, imagine the. I don't take um, a very robust vehicle to travel at those depths. And if. Um, I don't know if the big vessel that they're, the characters are on is supposed to be travelling that way, but the. Um, the surface area of that thing must be enormous. I guess that would diffuse the pressure somewhat. 
Um, but still, uh, right now, hi, are you ready to to speak? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What happened on the Agni? Chipboy said, All passengers who are members of the Polar Research Team, please follow lead lights to security stations. Oh, thanks. Thanks for that, Homer. Okay, we've got a narrative one slot. You see, who would ever know? Polar Research Team. Of course that was Peter. Matrix traces of the lead light paths had been rewritten, even by the time Sable and the ENC had boarded. Central Processing has notified reservations about the Agni. Please go there. We've all got reservations, Homer. Okay, but what's this extra little bit? Peter was there in the dojo by himself, naked. His back was toward her. He was balanced on the ball of his right foot, his knee flexed, arms outstretched in front, his left leg raised and bent. It was an impossible position, Laren thought. He must be in the middle of some motion. But he did not move, not exactly. His posture remained static and impossibly off balance. He was turning, though in a movement so slow as to be nearly no movement at all. She could see the beginnings of his profile now. The muscles of his lean, hard body were wire-taut, almost frozen. She didn't know how long he stood like that. She could see the light sheen of perspiration on his face and back. She noticed after a time she'd been holding her breath and had to exhale. The sound of her breath seemed loud but nothing disturbed the concentration of the boy across the room. She couldn't imagine how he was doing it. The ball of his foot was in contact with the mat. There were muscles in the foot. She moved closer, silently. She focused on his foot, trembling from the exertion, a small vibration in the visible bones along the top of the arch as it hovered a centimetre from the floor. Yet it was clear this effort was draining him. His heel began to wobble. The vibration grew larger, more erratic. Suddenly, with a deep, sighing exhalation, Peter lowered his heel to the floor, allowed his hands to flow to his sides, his other foot to settle. The entire release of concentration was fluid and heart-catchingly graceful. That was beautiful, Laren said, her voice hushed. Peter walked unsteadily across the room, to the bench where his clothes lay. He dressed unhurriedly, almost preoccupied, and said nothing. Laren found herself unable to leave, unable to speak. She dipped into a series of slow stretching exercises to cover her own confusion. We've all been there, right? She was not embarrassed, of course. It was something else. Something that had to do with her sense that she had intruded on his privacy, his inwardness. Something that has been teaching me he said, wiping his face with a towel. Not easy, I confess. My bodily spatial aptitudes were not high as a kid, you see, but it seems that the ants have been working on such things for decades. When you live in a country with six months of night, you learn to find things to do with the external darkness. How she stayed in her stretch, her head hanging down, looking back between her legs so she could not see him. Peter smiled. Laren, he said softly. She did not. She did look up then. Yes? Come here. He sat on the bench. When she sat beside him, he went on. I want to say something about Wanda. She had proprioceptive degener degeneration. You understand what that means, don't you? She could never tell where her own body was in space. She watched herself in a mirror to know where her hands, her feet, her legs were. But the rest of us simply know. It's very difficult to empathise with such a thing because it's hard to even imagine it. It was the same with Jimmy Radix. He was lost in time, Marion. Lost without memory. Memory that keeps us fixed in time. That makes us makes the word now mean something. We know what now is because we remember then. A minute ago, an hour ago, a year. Jimmy didn't have that. 
He was silent for a while, looking inward where she could not follow. She waited. I've had to learn from Jimmy and from Wanda. What I learned was that the two things these two people lost are the two most important things we have as human beings. Both of them had enormous courage. They learned to adapt. No, more than adapt. They learned to live with their fear, to let the fear flew th flow through them and out, always. Jimmy was always afraid, Laren. Always. Wanda, too. She fears not being near a mirror. Yet Jimmy deliberately broke his personal monitor so that he could cover our escape. He willingly went back to the state he feared most, the loss of his sense of time. And Wanda gave herself to the cryofield because it might mean a cure. She is willing now to give up that hope to help us. Again, he fell silent. Laren touched his arm so lightly he may not have noticed. She said nothing, though, and dropped her hand. So I've been working with Thatcher. He smiled at her. These are techniques for orienting yourself, for suspending motion or focusing attention. It's not easy, as I said, but I think we will all have to learn it. Why? Because we are going to have to lead... He was interrupted by a sharp attention call, as though the vessel were a bell and they were inside when it was struck. Ship boy spoke. This is the ship. We have encountered an ENC patrol vessel, which requests us to stop for inspection. It is my understanding that this is undesirable, yet we are without means of prevention. In five minutes we will come to a stop relative to the sea floor. Come on, Peter said, taking Aaron's hand. It's us they're after. Here we go, some dramatic tension. This is what I was looking for. Okay, let's let's roll with it. Let's roll with it as far as we can. You may wonder how we know so much. In fact, we do not know, not really. Yet the vessel on which they travelled is at this moment lying in 70 feet of water off the old harbour at Cape Town, and we have probes aboard. Agni has been there for 20 years, one of the prizes of the great double-A invasion force, and never have we thought to examine it. Such an order should have come from central processing long ago. Only within the past few days did CP make the suggestion. So now we've de deprogrammed the data set, the crystals and shipboy's ID. We know that they must have been aboard, Peter and the others. We are coming to know Peter Devor very well. We must. You see, without humans, we have no reason to exist. And Peter took them all away. So he took away our reason to exist. Yet we cannot merely allow our systems to close down. We cannot merely shut ourselves off and cease to exist. We cannot do this, and we do not understand why. This is disturbing. We have never been disturbed before. We find we must act. We must keep telling the story we have begun. We are compelled. What is happening? We've always known that there were people who could get along well with machines, who in truth got along best with machines better than with members of their own species. But we are machines. We lack certain things. Empathy, for example. We have no bodies, not in the sense that Wanda Sixlove or Peter Devore had bodies. We have no sense of time, not in the way these people had a sense of time, not even in the sense that Jimmy Radix had such a sense. We clock everything in gigahertz. We tick by the cesium clock. We monitor and correlate trillions of circuits, relays, gate arrays, switches, organics and processors. We follow the rules built into our systems made of matter. We have no spirit. Do we? But because I am Homer, grown to tell stories, I must tell the story. And I find that I get along better with people than I do with machines. This is a curious and disturbing thing. I feel impatient with central processing, which constantly interrupts my tale with questions and suggestions. Though they are part of me, I dislike a number of the AI nodes for their constant chatter, their preoccupation with balanced databases, with calculating vectors, with maintaining energy budgets, processor time budgets, memory allocation budgets. They natter at me about trivialities. I am more interested in Peter. Peter is complex, contradictory, changeable. Peter is not a machine. You see, I use the present tense. Do I believe Peter is alive, even now? What does it mean for me to believe something?
I am a machine, a canister of organic crystals. How can I believe? Yet I use the present tense for no good reason. This is very disturbing. It is disturbing to us all. Regent Sable certainly borders the Agni. This could have meant he was very close to Peter then. Very close. But he boarded many undersea vessels in the Mariana Trench that spring, desperate to find Peter. Why was he so desperate? Why do I care? I cannot say, not yet, but I feel we are getting closer to understanding what has happened to the world. You see, a feeling. I feel we are getting close. And I am a machine. I have no feelings. Isn't that so? I feel great discomfort. I will continue. Hmm, I find the writing for Homer to be the most convincing and compelling, I think, of, of any of the parties involved in the story. Now that we have examined the vessel, though, we can deduce what happened. Okay, another little nugget at the bottom of the, the list. Imagine Peter in the exercise room with Larin when Ship Voice made the general announcement. Wherever members of Peter's team might be, a lead light appeared, a small orange plasma glow projected in the air. Internal sensors would tell whether they were following or not. They surely did follow, though, and these orange spheres would have led them down and aft, down and aft, towards the cargo cells. The ship had living and work quarters in the upper fore section, wrapped in a short curve along the sides and above the brain of the vessel. All the rest would be cargo compartments, threaded by coolant field inductors, maintenance crawl spaces, electromagnetic conduit and sensor strips. In the centre of the vessel is a room. We have found this room. It is neither large nor exceptional, just another cargo cell like all the others. Its only oddity is that it contains no trace of methane. Well, that's good. We uh, we can do with less methane, really. Well, Homer, is that? Are you gonna leave? Is is that it? Are we gonna be left on a cliffhanger of no methane? Or should we have a quick look in central processing and see what we find there? I think you did. Yeah, Agni report. Okay. Agni report. Stroke Homer link auth code 6. Agni is 600 metres long, 200 metres wide and 40 metres thick. A broad, flat, shark shape designed to be aquadynamic and pressure secure. She carried a load of almost 4 million cubic metres of liquid methane. Um, reiterating what we found out elsewhere. Despite her size, she is very difficult to detect. Her salt cycle plasma drive leaves little thermal wake, and such chemical disruptions as her passage do leave are detectable only at very short range. She makes almost no sound. Only a body that size, moving at her speed, leaves a subtle distortion on the wave patterns at the surface because of vertical displacements. Such patterns can be detected by our wide aperture satellite sensors. Still, there are many undersea vessels in the trench, and the patterns are confusing. Okay. Okay, nothing new there. So, is, um, does Homer have a new entry for us as a result of that? Yeah, okay. Regent Sable felt certain Peter was aboard. He led his team through an intense scan of both the ship's log and her spaces. He was ready to tear the vessel apart with his probes and his instruments, his scanners and his questioning. He found the Polar Research Team in an upper starboard conference room, 
making plateau ice flow projections. There were, as it happened, 16 members of the team. They were all ants. Their broad, flat faces, curious and unafraid, when Regent Sable and his squad of ENC Corps men entered. We are looking for some passengers aboard this vessel, Sable said. He leaned against the edge of the conference platform, casual and relaxed, yet everyone there and the ship monitors could read his tension. Yes, one of the ants asked. There are not many passengers aboard such a vessel, Protector Sable, just this team and a few returning negotiators. This is a cargo vessel, we... He gestured at the group gathered around a complex graphic simulation of sub-ice geology, and we're making some comparison studies at the Arctic Pole, ice. He smiled disparagingly. We ants are interested in ice, you see. We live on it. We live in it and under it, too. Yes, yes, Sable dismissed his chatter. I am not interested in ice. I am interested in 16 passengers. We consider the possibility that your ship log showed a manifest of 16 members of this team. Coincidence? I think not. We are looking for 16 people. We have every reason to believe they are aboard this vessel. You are coming from the right place and are headed in the right direction. We regret, but unless you are looking for us, we cannot help you, Protector. Antarctica would like to maintain good relations with Intercorp, of course. We believe in cooperation. After all, we do have considerable trade relations with the rest of the globe. This vessel is an example, since it carries polar methane. He shrugged. I'm sorry, but we really are a research team and not a collection of refugees. In that case, my group will be forced to remain aboard for a thorough search. Regent gestured to the ENC commander, who directed his men to begin setting up their equipment. Again, I don't think this is a point that needs to be belaboured. We just kind of need to know what the what the upshot is, don't we? So, military, the military are involved. Uh, but not described. History. I kind of haven't advanced, so I don't know. No, it doesn't look like it. SciTech. Maybe their equipment, their instruments is what we need to read about. Yep, it is. Tanker Transport Schematic 2. There we go. Okay, that looks like it could be regular detail. There's the bridge. Uh, current entry tanker transport schematic. Agni control room. Ship blog, AI, processors, and data storage matrix. Thanks. Data probe techniques. Uh, parentheses, ENC. Uh, current entry data probe techniques, parentheses, ENC specific. Oh, I was flashing in. Because the ENC were given full police responsibility within the Intercorp sphere, they were forced to develop techniques for collecting and integrating data quickly. Information on such techniques must be freely available to all citizens by law. Modified AI algorithms, particularly those from Homer and Central Processing, were used widely in such assessments. As an example, the ENC might board a vessel, surface or under sea, for suspected refugees en route to Antarctica, as in the case of Peter DeVore and his followers. ENC officers would open communications and request permission to board for inspection. Such requests were never denied. Within moments, then, they were connected to the ship's matrix, sensor scan modules and ship log, and had set up their own independent equipment. They spread out, carrying full-spectrum monitors, chemo sensors, hypersound probes, and data pairs displaying the vessel's standard schematics. Once integrated into the system, all information available to such a ship's log was available as well to the ENC and relayed to the nearest matrix storage depot. 
in this case, Hong Kong. Come to Homer? Alright. Alright, Homer. Alright, let's go and see what Homer has to say, and I think that will be the end for today's stream. Okay, we've got one here. So it's added on to the yeah, added on to the end of narrative section one. It was a slow, painstaking process, but in the end they found nothing. Thanks, I am us. Not even methane, but the sounds of it. Okay, we have got a genuine bit of narrative. When Peter and the others had all gathered at the cargo lock, Thatcher spoke to them. It'll be cold, he said, very cold, and none of you are adapted yet and so used to such conditions. One day all of you will be capable of walking through without concern, for now you must wear protective gear. We can't let you use protective induction fields and we will be forced to allow each pod to flood as soon as you're through. You'll be trapped until the crisis is over. You will also be safe. ENC does not have a sensor that can detect your presence to 20 metres of liquid methane, and the ship has already been purged of your chemical and electromagnetic presence, as well as all sensor and memory data. Once we are underway, once more, we will release you. Send your protective gear, which will supply you with breathable air for several days, provided you can serve. Stay close together too, since the coolant field will try to remove excess thermal energy. We're confident the field can redistribute the excess throughout the cargo mass in a way that will be undetectable, but if you stay close together, there will be less excess to give you away. Understand? Good. Peter knows the route. Okay, so uh, in suits going into giant chambers of liquid methane. Well, that's a what an image to leave us on. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll leave it there. Thanks, Omar. Oh no, hang on, I want to remember to save first, don't I? Well, let's nip into central processing, that's a, always a convenient place to go to save. And if there's anything new there, there wasn't. Alright, we know for next time, nothing new in central processing. But we'll save there. Well, thank you very much for joining me, everybody. Always appreciate the company. Um, and, yeah, so I, this this uh, game, this narrative experience, is has gone on much longer than I had anticipated. So I'm going to make this our last stream of this game, and next time I stream it will be something new. It might be a one-off, um, or it might be the start of um, a streaming series, I don't know. Um, but what I'll do is I'll upload any remaining uh, VODs, so it'll be last, a last story, our last a play session of this and the the current one still to go up on my YouTube channel, and then I will I'll continue to play the game because I am curious where the story goes and what it all adds up to if anything. Um, but I'll probably record it in smaller sections to be kinder to my voice and um, and to make the whole thing a bit more manageable to edit as well. Um, so maybe like thirty minute episodes of of kind of a let's play style, very similar to this, but obviously um, won't be live. So that's my plan for Portal. Um, yeah, and and I probably can't stream next week. Um, it's looking like another busy one. So it'll probably be a stream in two weeks' time. But there's always the chance that I might get uh, time on a Sunday morning, UK time, to do a stream. So uh, so check out uh, the the Twitch page for that. I'll... Um, yeah, if you if you follow along on Twitch, then you'll be notified next time I go live. Um, and if you subscribe on YouTube, um, you get the same because I might experiment with some YouTube streaming as well. Now, uh, I'm YouTube is allowing me to, so that's exciting. Um, yeah, and I think I think that's that's all the uh, the housekeeping we need to do. Um, I'll just say hello to whoever's in chat. Um, so that's zero uh, ax two, another TV viewer. Bing Cortana, Lizzie Beth, and Super A. Uh, thank you, thank you for being here. Much appreciated. Um, thank you for for being quiet companions in another session of Portal. 
Until next time, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.